Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my updated Bennett guide. About four months ago, I made a Bennett guide and it was pretty good, but a lot of the information is outdated. A lot has changed. There are new weapons and I have new recommendations regarding artifact stats and sets. It's not as black and white as you might think. And there's just a lot to cover about Bennett. As you guys know, I've been using this guy since my first video. Since people thought he was bad, I was critting huge numbers because of his burst, uh, using him as my main healer. And he's just a very strong unit. Obviously, I'm friendship 10 with him. I love the guy. And so I'm going to tell you all you need to know in this video. Now, I don't want to take much. I don't take much time. So I'll make this fast. But first of all, I do want to say that I am in the middle of finals right now. So sorry if my videos have been inconsistent. I have a lot of work to do, but I do have a bunch planned. So stay tuned for that. And I do try to stream almost every night on Twitch. So link in the description if you are interested. And I will be posting updates in Discord. But anyways, let's get right into the video. So the way this video is going to work is we're going to be covering everything, you know, artifacts, weapons, everything you need to know about Bennett's support. Uh, and for Bennett DPS, I'll give some tips, but I'll mainly leave that for another video. And I'll also link uh, my math guys, the Jeff Sunday sevens Bennett guide, which is comprehensive and covers Bennett DPS as well. But if you do want to see a separate video on that, let me know. I'm going to start by quickly talking about his talents. They are pretty straightforward, so this shouldn't take too long. And then we're going to get into like his build and stuff. So first of all, the best part about Bennett obviously is his burst fantastic voyage. This is an insane ability. One of the best bursts in the game. Uh, it heals you. It gives you a bunch of damage and the damage scales off of your base attack. So mine is very high level. It'll give me 106% of uh, Bennett's base attack, it'll buff my uh, whatever characters in the field by that amount. It also lasts for 12 seconds, which is huge, and only has 15 second cooldown, so effectively a three second downtime uh, if you do have enough energy. On top of that, it has an insanely high scaling, so if you are building him like pyro damage with like crit and stuff, even as a support, it can do a ton of damage. His elemental skill, Passion Overload, uh, has a very low cooldown if you don't charge it. Now, you can either charge it or not charge it. There are a few ways to use this. However, I almost always recommend just tapping it because the cooldown is lower and it generates the same amount of particles. So generally, charging it is just never worth it um, from what I can tell. And this ability will generate pyro particles for you pretty fast. Uh, you can. It's very good with like a Shangling or a pyro carry who needs them. And it's also good for Bennett himself to get his burst back. On top of that, he has talents that actually reduce the cooldown of this ability. So first one, Rekindle decreases the cooldown by 20%. And then the other one decreases it by 50% when you use it inside of your burst. So when you use your E in your Q, the cooldown will be reduced by 50%, which is huge because you can literally just spam it. Uh, and this can be very useful if you need particles. Now, regarding his burst, some really important info is that it scales off of base attack. Now, I need you guys to know this for the rest of the video because it's gonna be like a core uh, component of a lot of the things I'm gonna tell you. Basically, why I justify running a high base stack weapon, why I think some things are, are a lot better than they seem is because of how this burst works. It scales only off of base stack, which means which means that having like attack percent on stats doesn't matter, but having a good weapon with high base stack is very important. On top of that, for your feather, this does not increase your base stack. There's a common misconception. Uh, people have started to catch on now, like it's not too widespread anymore, but um, feathers do not give you base stack. They just give you flat attack. It's different. So having a plus 20 versus a plus zero feather doesn't really matter uh, for your burst. Also, Bennett's burst when it's when you're not Constellation 1, and we'll talk about that uh, later, but basically it heals you when you're under 70% HP. And then when you're over 70% HP, it'll give you an attack buff instead of healing you. It'll give you an attack bonus based on Bennett's attack when your HP is higher than 70%. Now, if you're Constellation 1, you always get the attack buff, um, but at C0 especially, you only get it past 70% HP. And something to note is that Bennett can heal you like past the 70 threshold. Like, let's say uh, you get the healing buff when you're at like 69%. It'll increase it, you know, higher than 70. But once you are getting close to full HP, Bennett will no longer heal you. So he won't be like full healing you, but it'll still heal you more than enough. Now let's talk about Bennett's artifact sets. So there are actually a few good ones and they're situational. But first of all, let me talk about the best one overall in most situations. And that set is the four piece Noblesse Oblige or Noblesse Oblige, however you say it. Um, it is very good because it has two good effects. First of all, it increases your burst damage, which can be nice if you run your Bennett as a sort of burst support. And it also, and this is the best part, increases all your party members attack by 20%. And this happens when you use your burst and it lasts 12 seconds. So it effectively makes your burst a lot stronger and it buffs your whole party, which can be very, very strong uh, paired with like off field supports or just, you know, carries. So four piece Noblesse Oblige is great and it's pretty much made for Bennett. And most people know Noblesse is good on him, but there are actually some other sets that can sometimes be better depending on your team. So I want to talk about those quickly. Uh, so yes, generally speaking, Noblesse is what I recommend, but here are the other sets that can be good as well. First of all, Instructor, the four piece can be very nice in, in specific comps. So when your main carry is proccing Melt or Vaporize, you know, it can be like an ele elemental carry. Let's say Hu Tao with Xing Chu, constantly proccing Vaporize. Instructor can be great and can actually offer you more damage than Noblesse 
depending on your team call. And what's nice about Instructor is you can actually run it with Noblesse, like one of your uh, supports can have Noblesse and the other can have Instructor and they can work well together. Another good set is the Four Piece Exile, and this will give you less damage than something like a Noblesse, but it can be good if your team comps need particles. So in some specific comps where you don't have enough, when you need more particles, you can run Four Piece Exile on your Bennett if you want to. Once again, I recommend having Four Noblesse on a unit, right? One of your units, especially with like a Shao team, let's say, because Shao likes having attack percent. It's really good for him, but he also needs particles, right? He is a, a character who can struggle to get his burst sometimes. So exile can solve that problem uh, if you do want it. If you don't know what exile does, it gives you 20% energy recharge, which is good. And on top of that, it um, when you use a burst, it generates two energy for all other party members every two seconds for six seconds. So it's pretty nice. Now for Bennett's artifact stats, this has kind of changed since the last video because there's actually a few different ways to build them. I want to repeat before I begin that this is a support Bennett video. If you're running him DPS, obviously focus on crit and stuff. Uh, and we'll, we might talk about that in a separate video. But even as a support, there are a few different ways to build them regarding uh, especially the last three, right? Sands, Goblet, and Circlet. So we're going to talk about that. The first thing I want to say is your most important substat on a support Bennett is energy recharge. It should be what you prioritize the most because Bennett needs a lot. If you're running a pyro carry, you can get away with less, but general rule would be like 200 or more. You might even need up to like 250 or as much as you can get so that your Bennett can use his burst all the time without having to farm particles. So the subset you should be looking for on every single piece you have is energy recharge because of how good it is on Bennett. And something to remember, as I mentioned earlier, is that your feather doesn't really matter. It doesn't increase your base attack, right? So it doesn't buff your uh, burst. So you can leave it low level if you want, but leveling it does increase, um, basically gives you more better substats. So uh, something to keep in mind. Regarding the last three pieces, uh, I would almost always recommend energy recharge on the sands. I think it's just great, but the other two actually depend. Now you can run something like HP with healing bonus for maximum healing. And if you need more healing on your Bennett, if you want a strong healer, that's what I would recommend. However, if you guys remember my Chi Chi video, I say that Chi Chi heals so much that if you're investing into her, you might as well give her damage. And while you might not want to invest in your Chi Chi, while it might not be optimal for you, if you do want to invest in a character that already heals so much, you don't have to give them uh, a bunch of healing bonus because they already heal enough. So if your Bennett is healing enough, you can actually, and this is what I usually do, give him like a pyro damage goblet, ideally with energy recharge, so that their burst when you use it does deal a decent amount of damage while still healing enough. Now for Bennett especially, it does depend because you might need that bonus healing on your goblet uh, with an HP goblet and you might need the healing bonus on the circlet, but I have found from my experience in my teams, Bennett heals more than enough, even with bad artifacts, that I usually end up running Pyro Goblet with a crit circlet, so either rate or damage, uh, depending on what I need. So Bennett obviously heals a lot, especially with high talent levels, which is why uh, oftentimes running damage on him, if you can, on like Goblet and circlet can be good. And I do wanna clarify something, basically for Bennett, your substats are oftentimes more important than your main stats. So as I just mentioned, Right, Pyro Damage will give you more uh, more damage and HP will give you more healing, but usually I would recommend going with whatever has the most energy recharge substat. My math guy, Zajef, actually runs a Cryo Goblet on his Bennett, which seems super dumb, but his, uh, his energy recharge substat on his Cryo Goblet is much higher than on any other Goblet he has, and getting the energy recharge bonus is oftentimes better than having a bit more healing or having more damage, because making sure your Bennett has his burst up all the time is a lot more important than having, you know, as I said, a bit more healing or a bit more damage. So while I don't recommend a cryo goblet, obviously, basically I'm trying to say that your energy recharge is what should be your number one priority. So energy recharge sands, but after that, trying to get the highest energy recharge substat on every single piece should matter more than like the main stat or honestly any other substat. Now I'm going to talk about the main reason I wanted to remake this four month old video and it's regarding Bennett's weapons. So since the last video, a lot of new weapons have come out, which are very good on Bennett, right? Notably the Festering Desire, the uh, Alley Hunter, I believe it's called. And a lot of weapon rankings, especially like in my opinion and what I'm going to recommend have changed. Base attack on Bennett is so important that it's often valued above everything else for your Bennett. And there are some situations where certain weapons are better than others. Uh, depending like, you know, depending on what you have, your substats, your comps and all that. So I'm going to try to cover this in as much detail as possible without taking too much time. First of all, I just want to clear up the free to play weapons for Bennett and then we'll move on to like his best in slot. So the free to play weapons, there are basically three. There is the Iron Sting, which has a very low base attack. It's on screen now. This is a, only a good weapon for DPS Bennett, but for a support Bennett, the base attack's too low, so it shouldn't be considered. The two good ones are the Prototype Rancor with a 44 base attack at level one and the Festering Desire with 42 base attack at level one, um, but it does have that energy recharge substat. So these are the two uh, really good free to play ones and people always ask me which one they should run and I wanna try to give you guys my opinion. Basically, I think it depends where in the game you are and your substats. So for most players, most like until the end game, 
Festering Desire can usually be better for you because it gives you energy recharge and you often need that on your Bennett. But when you're in the end game, when you're min maxing and you have a ton of energy recharge on all your artifact pieces, having the higher base stack on uh, Bennett can actually benefit you because it gives you more damage from your burst. And to sort of explain this uh, once and for all for all the weapons, basically you can't build base stack on your artifacts, right? You can't have a base attack substat, you can't get more base stack except from your weapon. And you know, leveling up, but energy recharge is something you can optimize, you can get more of on your artifacts, which means on a weapon, base attack is usually more valuable than anything else. So because of that, in the end game, Roncor will actually give you more damage than Festering Desire. So Roncor is usually what I recommend um, in the later game. Whereas if you're you know struggling to clear Abyss, if your Bennett doesn't have enough energy recharge, Festering Desire can be better. For the other four star weapons, basically the gacha ones, um, except Ali Hunter, which we'll talk about, all have lower base stack than Roncor. So they're usually worse unless, once again, you need the energy recharge. First of all, Sacrificial Sword, uh, 41 base stack, not the greatest on Bennett. I would not recommend this uh, over a Roncor or a Festering Desire. Favonius Sword also has a low base stack, but this one has its niche uses. I don't like it because it has low base stack, but if you have a lot of crit, and if you need a ton of ER, if your Bennett needs a bunch, and if your team can use these white particles that uh, the, the effect generates, right? Let's say you uh, get the white particles, swap the Shao, and give them to him who might need that energy. It can be a good sword for you, but generally I don't like it because of the low base stack. Also, regarding the Black of Longsword, it has the same base stack as Roncor, so same usage, uh, but it does cost Star Glitter. But the last force I want to talk about is the Alley Flash. This weapon has an insanely high base stack. As you can see, 45 at level 1, which is very strong. This means that if you have it, it's usually the best 4-star for Bennett because of the high base stack. Once again, you might need an ER sword, uh, it obviously depends on you, but as a general rule, high base stack is very good, so Alley Flash can be insane on Bennett and can actually out DPS a lot of other weapons. So very good uh, sword for Bennett. Now regarding the 5-stars, basically they're all good. Um, in my last video, I said Skyward Blade is his best sword, and it still can be. However, the base stack on it is actually quite a bit lower than on Aquila, right? Both of mine are level 90, and this one gives me 674 versus 608. So the damage my burst uh, basically gives my party, the damage bonus it gives, the attack bonus, is actually quite a bit higher on Aquila, honestly higher than you might expect, because the base stack uh, is very nice. That being said, I still recommend Skyward Blade as a general amazing sword on Bennett. It can oftentimes be the best option because of the very high energy recharge, right? 55%, that's pretty crazy. And a still pretty high base stack, higher than most other weapons. But for me personally, if I have to choose between Skyward Blade and Aquila, I think Aquila is the best sword on him for me because it gives me a ton of base stack. So as long as you have enough energy recharge, Aquila is better than Skyward Blade. But if you need energy recharge and, you know, base stack as well, Skyward Blade can be the best bet. So both of these swords are good, and if you only have one, you should use that one. If you have both, I would go with Aquila if you have enough ER, and Skyward Blade if you need more. Personally, I run Aquila, and I have, with my good artifacts, right, I have 256 ER, um, and usually I only have like 200, this is just because I put my best artifacts on, but usually even with like 200 ER, um, with Aquila, I'm fine. Also, I didn't talk about the other five stars, but they're okay, they basically just give base attack, and that's it. Now let's talk about Bennett's constellations. So... There's a lot to unpack here. First of all, I want to say is Constellation 1 is definitely one of the best C1s in the game. I put this up there with like Hu Tao's C1 as one of the, the biggest upgrades from a Constellation 1. Uh, it isn't needed. Like it is very, very hyped. I wouldn't really call it overhyped, but some people think they need C1 for Bennett to be good. Just don't think that. Bennett's an amazing unit even without it. C1 just makes it better. Basically, he no longer only buffs you when you're under 70% uh, HP. It will always give you that attack increase. And it also gives you another 20% of Bennett's base attack. So it's just very good. Another really good constellation for support Bennett is actually the C5, which just increases your burst level. So it's just more damage and healing. His other constellations are kind of weird. Uh, C2 gives you more energy recharge when you're low HP. C3 and 4 give you more damage, so it can be good for DPS, but not really useful for support. And his C6 is a big one that I want to talk about. Basically, as you can see, my Bennett uh, 6 constellation is not activated. I have that exclamation mark there forever. And I don't think for me it's worth activating because I play so many characters. What this does is it infuses your character, whoever's DPSing, whoever's in your burst, it infuses their weapon if they are a sword, claymore, or polearm user with pyro. And it also gives you a 15% pyro damage bonus. So this can be good if you're running like Deluke, right? More pyro damage. It can be good with like a Kaching and a pyro Kaching build. It can be good for certain units. However, it can also be bad. This can 
ruin certain characters. If you want to run a physical razor, you can't anymore. If you want to run, you know, some physical DPS or in general, it can ruin some characters, but it can also be good and beneficial, especially with pyro units or when you want to become a sort of pyro carry. However, you can't toggle constellations. Now, hopefully this uh, changes in the future, but if you activate this, you can no longer deactivate it. You can't turn it off. So it might ruin your account if you play a character who doesn't want this. Let's say they release Razor 2.0 and it's a physical carry and you don't want their damage to be pyro. If you have activated the C6 on Bennett, you can no longer play them together uh, if their synergy is, is bad. So because of that, I wouldn't risk activating it um, unless you know for sure you're like only going to play Bennett with this character. But even then, I personally don't recommend C6 Bennett at all. Now, as I said, I want to reiterate just so I don't like sort of bait anyone into activating it or not activating it. I don't recommend it in general. If you play a lot of units, it can be bad, but it can also be good, right? As I said, it enables Pyro Kaching, it can buff your Shangling, it can be good. And I personally like using Bennett in every team, so I don't want to activate it just, uh, just in case it messes up certain teams. Now for Bennett's team comps, this is going to be a really short section, and I was planning on just saying put Bennett in any team and he's usually the best healer because of how strong of a unit he is. Uh, best healer overall and just insanely powerful. Um, and I was going to just leave it at that, but... I do want to give you guys some teams where Bennett is crucial, and so I do want to talk a bit about him. Uh, first of all, in Shangling teams, when it's Shangling being a pyro carry, she kind of depends on Bennett to feed her particles. Bennett's E has an insanely low cooldown, as you guys know, in his burst, so I always recommend running them together if you are running Shangling, right? Bennett doesn't need Shangling, but Shangling needs Bennett, and I explain more in detail why in my Shangling video, but, but let's say you're running a child Shangling comp. I can't recommend this uh, ever without Bennett because another healer just won't really generate those pyro particles for your Shangling, which means that she'll either need a ton of energy recharge or she won't have her pyro nato up um, that often. But apart from that, I'm going to keep this section really short because basically just build a team around your DPS, right? It can be a Shao team, a Duluth team, it doesn't matter. And fitting Bennett is as like your healer is usually just optimal or really good. So yeah, overall, it's no surprise to people that have been watching me for a while that I love Bennett and think he's one of the strongest units in the game, period. Best healer, one of the best, if not the best four stars in the game, super versatile and basically always good. He's an insanely strong support and can also be a good DPS, which we might talk about in another video. I'm super busy with finals right now, so sorry if my upload schedule is inconsistent, but I am very active in my Discord and I do try to stream most nights, so a link to both of those are in the description if you're new here. That being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to, if you don't, that's okay too, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.